Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Brent Bates, and this is my over the fence post segment, which is now over the desktop segment. <laughs> the fence post camera is not working right now. Um, and I'll tell you what, today is going to be a little bit of a ramble, but it's an intentional ramble. You know, my dad used to say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And I'll repeat that. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And unfortunately, a lot of Americans really don't stand for anything anymore. Uh, we have engaged in such moral relativism that there are no absolutes. Okay. In fact, in our spiritual lives, uh, we have turned the Bible into a loose leaf notebook. Um, if we don't want to be considered this, we rip that page out. And if we don't want to be considered that, we rip this page out. And rather than letting the Bible conform our hearts and minds to it and to God's word, we conform God's words to the moral relativism of how we feel. And it's really unfortunate because we've just about gotten to the point where uh, all, all men and women seem to have the same hormonal patterns. Um, of, you know, getting upset, getting their knickers in a knot and so on and so forth. And so how you feel is not really a very good standard uh, with which to uh, gauge what the world is doing and therefore what you need to be doing. I find it interesting the number of people that are willing to sell their soul for a few minutes of fame, a little bit of money, a little bit of notoriety, um, you know, how quickly people turn their backs on their constituents, on the people they're supposed to be representing, and how quickly we can pass a law that uh, lets us get away with murder, but you've got to toe the line. And not only do you have to toe the line, we got 87,000 people that don't know how to use those firearms uh, going to help you toe the line as IRS agents. And, and so all of this, in my opinion, is a recipe for disaster. And so it's not hard to look around and wonder, where is all this going? But what's the most concerning out of all of it is, is the number of people that are willing to trade their freedom for pseudo security. And what I mean by pseudo security is, is the whims of the government for this day. And so literally, um, you know, they shut the government down. So what they do, they give everybody a little a little money, a little graft. We're going to kind of help you through the deal. And they don't care how much of this they print because they're the ones that are printing it. Uh, and they're going to make sure that no matter how much they print, they get their fair share. So it doesn't matter what the value of the dollar goes to, they're going to get more wealthy all the time. And so we have seen because of our moral relativism, because of the fact that we don't have any mores or standards, we've seen a huge divergence between the haves and the haves nots. The haves that can afford the lobby, the haves that can afford to petition the government. You know, think about it, all the big companies, Amazon, you know, Microsoft, so on and so forth, you know, all the big tech companies, what do they do? They got special standards from the federal government that allowed them to compete in a manner that nobody else could compete with. You know, they're not out there slugging it out like most small businessmen, you know, whether your trade is an electrician or a plumber or whatever it is, okay? You're not out there slugging it out with competition because they were smart enough and fortunate enough to be able to lobby and get the laws that they need to make their business profitable and to make them eminently wealthy. And so the question becomes, how long will we continue to allow the country to have two standards, the them and the us, okay? And, you know, like the line in uh, It's a Wonderful Life when Jimmy Stewart's character said, you know, Potter, those rabble that you call that you're expecting for them to spend their whole life saving, saying put a roof on their head, over their head, they are the ones that do all the, the working and living and sweating and toiling and dying in this world, you know, not you. And so, you know, it was interesting how Obama used to talk about, oh, well, you, you never really make your own business, okay? But the whole time that they were doing the class warfare between the owner of the small business and the employees, and they were driving that wedge, 
all of those employees and all of the uh, people that were from a lower socioeconomic situation were cheering him on. But what they didn't realize was, is they were really corralling you over here so they could get 87,000 IRS agents with guns to come talk to you about your taxes. And the fact that you considered the owner was probably cheating on his taxes. So you had a little side business or a little gig over here that's cash driven or whatever. And now we want our fair share of all of that. They basically have done a great job of dividing and conquer. But it only happens, you can only divide and conquer when everybody is engaged in moral relativism. So get a backbone, decide what's right, decide what's wrong, decide what you will do, decide what you won't do, and stand for all of that, decide what you'll put up with, and decide what you don't put up with, and then let your voice be heard. Go out, vote. More importantly, go out and get active in who counts the votes, because I have news for you. Even in a small little town like where I ran for mayor, that cheating stuff goes on everywhere, and it's got to be stopped. And we as a country have got to find the moral standard that we all agree to and adhere to, and we got to get some backbone. We'll be back next week over the fence post here on the Wild West Crypto Show.